it's great to have you join us in another edition of Capital Market Live on Channel Television. I'm Ladi Williams. Well, this is the last one for the first quarter of 2024. Let's begin with a quick review of major global stock markets' performance at the end um, of the week. Starting, um, we see major bosses around the globe ended Friday's trading session mostly in the green as uh, traders assess major data out of the U.S. On Wall Street, the Dow rose by 0.12% while the S&P 500, that inched up by 0.11%, while the Nasdaq uh, composite that dipped 0.12%, it closed at 16,379 points. However, all three major averages notched um, healthy gains uh, for the week. In Europe, the index is closed slightly up. Uh, we see the UK's FTSE 100, uh, was up 0.26%, uh, while Germany's DAX rose 0.08%, and France's CAC index uh, closed today. Uh, up 0.01%, marginal gain there, um, that's in France. And across the Asia-Pacific region, Japan's Nikkei 225 was um, up half percent, while China's Shanghai Composite um, Index, the Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index, uh, ended Friday with big jumps up. And back here in Nigeria, the NAS, the OTC Securities Markets performance uh, ended the week positive, as the index rose by 2.65%, uh, week to date. However, the volume of securities traded um, this week that rose by 756% to 39 million units, while value fell by 26.97% to close the week at 1.31 trillion naira, while the number of deals carried out that was just the 68. Um, top advances for the week are Afriland Properties and Aradol Holdings PLC, while top decliners are Capital Bank or PLC and a Central Securities Clearing System which also emerged as the most traded security. And the domestic stock market ended the last trading week of March in the red. No thanks to profit taking on some bellwether stocks. As a result, the market's main index fell by 0.08%, bringing the month to date and yesterday performance to 4.7% and 40% accordingly. However, sectoral performance of listed equities was largely positive, except for the Consumer goods counter would drop by 0.97%. CWG PLC topped the list of gainers with a 26.05% price appreciation, while International Breweries PLC led 30 other losers down by 14.55%, while the trio of GTB, Zenit Bank, and Access Holdings Company were the top three contributors to a total of 1.89 billion equities traded this week. And now uh, we see the, it has finally come. The Central Bank of Nigeria has increased the capital base for commercial banks uh, with author, uh, international authorization to 500 billion naira and national banks to 200 um, billion naira. The CBN requires all banks to submit an implementation plan clearly indicating their chosen methods for meeting the new capital requirements. Uh, detailing the various activities and their timelines uh, by no later than April 30th, 2024. And we see um, Fidelity Bank, that's a uh, 500 uh, billion target. Uh, at, at this moment, they're 129.7 um, billion. So they have to meet up with 370 uh, billion to meet that minimum capital requirement. Access Bank has about 248 billion to go. GT Bank, 361 billion while Zenith uh, has about 229 billion and we see stand big the targets 200 billion and they have about 90.7 uh, billion to actually um, get to that well let's talk to Professor Uche Waleke director Institute of Capital Market Studies NASA State University Kefi great to have you on the show thanks so much Ladi for inviting me all right, before we get into the banks now, um, you see first quarter trading is technically um, over and the all share index is up by about 39.84%, about 40% in the first quarter of 2024. Quite impressive and it's uh, beating inflation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's beating inflation. That tells you that... Um, with respect to the equities uh, market, returns are positive, and uh, that's about um, one of the few asset classes where you find um, you know, positive returns. Um, um, even if you compare that with what obtains in the uh, fixed income space, um, 
Um, compared to inflation, we still have uh, negative um, you know, uh, real rate of returns, which is why, part of why the uh, central bank um, uh, you know, wants to, or has been hiking rates. Um, so the market has uh, performed, um, I would say, remarkably well. Um, at 39 or close to 40 percent year to day return, uh, which is also the same as quarter to date um, return, especially when you benchmark that performance against um, the common, common averages, uh, such as the Morgan Stanley uh, you know, Capital Index, the MSCI, for whether you're using emerging markets or you're also using that for you know, developed markets, that's the MCI world. Uh, we, of course, you know, emerging markets, you know, tracks market performance for about, in about 23, 23 countries. And if you look at the year-to-date return for emerging markets, um, okay, you get something in the negative territory, minus 0 0.1, you know, as I last, last time I checked. And uh, for the developed world, we are, we are, that also tracks um, performance in 24 developed economies, you have like a 5.5, 5.5%. So when you compare that with what we are doing here, um, you, you will of course agree that um, uh, the, uh, our equities market you know, has been quite remarkable in terms of, um, in terms of performance. And we, this has been, a, um, um, if you like, a carryover from what, also what we saw in 2023. In 2023, remember, the Nigerian equities market um, emerged virtually the top, you know, number one in the world, uh, with close to 50 percent, um, uh, you know, you know, return. So, um, and what has happened in, in the last quarter is no surprise, especially against the backdrop of, um, um, you know, corporate earnings. Um, a, a number of companies, you know, um, have reported um, relatively impressive uh, uh, performance. And um, a couple of them are also, um, you know, doing some um, you know, have proposed to pay dividends and so on, which, of course, uh, is what investors are, are looking for. So the high rate of return in the equities market has attracted um, the attention of, um, you know, uh, investors, particularly so when these returns are staying above um, inflation rates. And definitely, we, we, we've talked about uh, foreign investors. Uh, returning to the fixed income market at this time, we're seeing attractive uh, yields there. But if you look at February, uh, the month of February wasn't so good for the equities market. We, we see um, investors' estimated loss uh, was about 650, about 650 billion. Uh, so, what are you seeing um, for the second quarter of 2024? Is this still going to be uh, a, a, a bright quarter like we saw in the first quarter of 2024? Well, a whole lot of factors, you know, would be at play, um, you know, to be able to um, have an idea uh, as to how the market will perform. Um, if you look at what is happening globally, um, you know, you just reported that um, in the U.S., for example, major exchanges, um, you know, are beginning to pick up. Uh, because if you also look at the uh, MSCI world, Okay, for the month, okay, and for the week, you will also notice uh, that uh, you know some improvements, you know, have happened, and that's on the back of the uh, relative macroeconomic stability we are having in this country, in these uh, economies now. In the U.S., for example, infl inflation is, um, uh, you know, compared to what we saw, uh, you know, um, last year and um, uh, recent months, inflation rate is, you know, has moderated considerably. Um, in the Europe, it's the same, same story. In the Euro area, it's, it's the same story. And that's why, also, why you also find central banks in these countries, you know, now holding rates. Um, the Fed, uh, in the last, during their last meeting, you know, held rates. The same with the Bank of England, the European central banks. Okay, because inflation rates in these countries are uh, close to uh, their target, uh, you know, rates of about 2%. So that is also helping to, um, you know, uh, influence, uh, if you like, the performance of um, the markets over there. But what do we find here? Yes, inflation rate has remained stubborn, has remained um, elevated. Uh, in February, it came in at 31.7%. So, and of course, uh, that's inimical to investments generally. So you, you wouldn't be surprised if um, 
um, investors um, adopting some cautious um, uh, approach. Now, uh, we're looking into the next quarter, uh, what should we expect? Of course, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the monetary policy decisions will uh, significantly impact you know, uh, stock prices in, in the coming quarter. Uh, we know that the central bank MPC is um, adopting an aggressive uh, monetary policy stance. Um, the MPC has raised MPR by 600 basis, basis points in just one month. Um, you recall in February they raised it by 400 basis points and then uh, just recently to by another 200 basis points. So um, all of that uh, we know will um, contribute to shape uh, performance. If you also notice, part of why the market fell this week, okay, by the way, in your report, background reports, I, I saw you, uh, it was indicated by positive 0 0.08. Uh, what actually happened was a dip. So it's negative 0 0.08 for the, this week, uh, just the four, the four day trade, you know, Monday through Thursday. The market actually fell. And part of why that happened, yes, profit taking, but of course, profit taking on the back of um, the uh, anticip anticipation that um, the MPC would um, increase rates. And MPC, you know, actually did, um, you know, increase um, rates. Uh, we know the inverse relationship between, um, you know, um, increase in rates, MPR in particular, and, you know, stock market you know, returns. So, invariably, you should expect that um, in the coming quarter, a lot of... Um, uh, rebalancing will happen, a lot of migration will happen from the equities market to the fixed income market, especially when a lot of people consider fixed income securities as um, secure, as uh, risk-free. Um, recently, government securities have an issue that rates you know, in excess of 20%. And if the central bank is saying it wants to drive down inflation rate to below, uh, to about 21.4%, uh, once the government securities um, um, you know, return is ahead of inflation. Of course, you will find a lot of investors wanting to, you know, dump equities for the fixed income, um, you know, security. So, I don't, I, I, I would expect that in the next quarter, uh, the equities uh, market may not be as bullish as we have seen, you know, between January um, and March, the first quarter of this year. Forty percent is quite, is quite strong. Um, we may not see that kind of. Um, uh, increase uh, for the second quarter, um, especially on account of the the you know MPC, you know, right? Aggressive um, monetary yeah, policy. It's quite, yes, it's quite uh, it's quite a hawkish uh, MPC we're seeing you know at this time. But uh, we know 2023 was also um, a year you know most experts were were, were forecasting it would be bad for stocks and you know risk assets. But it was good for stocks and risk assets. But it seems 2024 is going to be different in Nigeria. Is it going to be the year of fixed income markets? That's 2024, from what you're seeing. Yes, uh, of course, one will always be uh, uh, positive. Um, in 2023, recall, Ladi, um, the GDP growth went from, I think, 2.4 uh, in third quarter of 2023 to 3.46. In, second, in the last quarter of 2023, okay, I've always argued that part of why that was so, uh, even though um, I, I may not have the data, but anecdotal evidence, if you like, you know, would point to the fact that it was also partly because MPC did not meet in September and also failed to meet in November. So the, there was no um, increase in our hiking rates you know, uh, in the last quarter of uh, 2023, okay? So that was also partly what um, propelled or powered the GDP growth we saw in the last quarter of 2023. Um, so, and if you also notice, the last quarter of 2023 also witnessed, um, uh, you know, some bullish um, actions in the equities market, which was why at the end of it all, we, the market uh, was able to, uh, print as high as um, you know 50 percent, you know um, you know year to date. So um, looking at what is happening, looking at where inflation rate is and the body language from the central bank um, that it told it wants to you know continue to tighten uh, policy uh, is concerned about inflation. One can easily predict 
that this will be a year for fixed income. Uh, look at what, is, what we have been told. Uh, just because of what um, has happened, we have been told over $1.5 billion you know, you know, has come in um, you know, as a result of um, the, 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 rate, the rate hike. So uh, one should expect that the more the central bank tightens, the more the central bank you know, hikes rates, the more attractive government securities um, you know, become, a lot more investors will want to uh, shift to uh, government securities. So that should, be, that should be expected. So investors in the equities market you know, should um, you know, be very conscious of that. And that's also why you find for, for some um, investment funds now, uh, attention is also shifting from the uh, fixed income to the you know, equities fund. That's talking about mutual funds now. Uh, you have a lot of attention now being shift, shift, you know, shifting from uh, fixed income uh, to the equities, um, equities fund right. and the mixed fund or balanced fund, as the case may be. All right, definitely at the end of 2024, we'll see which market actually you know, shined the most that's comparing to the equities and the fixed income market. But we're going to drill down on this uh, bank recapitalization process. Uh, we're going to drill down on the details right after this break. Um, do stay with us. We still have Professor Uche Waleke. He'll be breaking that down for us in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back to watching Capital Market Live on Channel Television. I still have with me uh, Professor Uche Waleke, the Director of Institute of Capital Market Studies, Nasara State University. Thank you for staying on. And yes, uh, as I said before in my intro, that time has come uh, for banks to recapitalize. Um, how much stress will this cause to the banks at this time in Nigeria? Well, you... I like the way you, you, you began it. Uh, time has come for banks to recapitalize. It's time they recapitalized. Um, the last time the exercise was done in, was in 20, uh, 2005. And um, in 2005, you remember, uh, it was from 2 billion to 25 billion. At the time, we had 89 banks. Many of them were weak. You know, weak. Um, after the exercise was concluded, uh, the the number you know, dropped to 25. Uh, then, and since then, we have not had this um, kind of um, you know, program uh, coming from the central bank. Um, again, I, is, uh, I always like to uh, say, you know, as um, justification for the recapitalization, that in 2005, ex the exchange rate was around 1, 2024, 25. Exchange was around 118 Naira to the dollar. Uh, today, it is um, 1,300, 1,250 um, naira, you know, to the dollar. So the the fact remains that the uh, naira devaluation and uh, successive depreciation that has happened over time, over the years, um, has had the effect of eroding the capital base of um, of banks today, especially those of them with international authorization, those of those of them that are competing outside. If you look at our banks, the size of our banks, and compare that with what we have in South Africa, of course, that, um, the whole thing pales in insignificance and um, um, it uh, you know, brings up the need for our banks to also, also scale up. So I think it's, it's a welcome development. And um, the central bank has given um, a two-year time, time uh, uh, period, which, which in my view is um, adequate for banks to be able to uh, you know, to meet up. And the central bank has also given options, you know, the banks can use. Uh, the first option is the stock market route. Of course, they are allowed to do public offer, offer for subscription. And they are also allowed to do rights issue. And they are also allowed to, although it doesn't go through the stock market now, a private placement. And the second option is major and acquisition. Uh, the third option is for those that are unable to meet up, can, you know, downgrade. Uh, there's also the option of, um, uh, you know, and the upgrade. So, um, overall, it's something that will help to strengthen the financial system. And it also is also going to have very, very positive impact on the stock markets. I'm excited about the first option uh, because I see a situation in which many banks will be, will be you know, going that route, um, uh, you know, 
considering the, the challenges associated with um, mergers and acquisitions, you know, the complications. So many will want to go the route of um, um, the stock market. Uh, it's been estimated that but, over but, 4 um, trillion uh, in, prof, is going to be raised what's the, what's as the a risk? result of this... Um, What's the risk, you know, of the banks actually going through the stock market option? We've seen some investors raise concerns that it might dilute, you know, the, the, the share price of most of the existing, you know, stocks and what they're actually holding, you know, at the time. Is that a real risk? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, of course, when you increase capital, um, it has the effect of um, diluting... Um, it dilutes control, uh, you know, control will be diluted, uh, particularly for shareholders who have um, a significant um, number of shares, maybe up to 5%. Of course, that um, that's, uh, controlling interest, you know, uh, is bound to be diluted. Uh, and on the part of earnings, of course, increased share capital will also have the effect of diluting earnings per share. Uh, and uh, by extension, dividend per share is also likely to... Um, you know, to, to reduce. But the argument I, I make is this. Yes, that is what, 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 what should be expected, but that's on the assumption that earnings will remain static. In the case of earnings per share and dividend per share, you are assuming that earnings will be static. But when a, a, a bank recapitalizes and the capital is, um, you know, used for uh, expansion, the, the bank is in a position to underwrite, you know, uh, you know, credit, you know big credit, finance big ticket um, uh, projects. So what happens? It also rubs off, rubs off um, positively on, um, on earnings. Now, the capital adequacy ratio um, is um, uh, ten, within, ten, between 10 and 15 percent. Okay? So by the time you raise the capital, you're also raising the ability of the banks to make loans. Capital adequacy ratio is the ratio of capital to risk assets, risk-weighted assets, that's the loans. Okay? So when you raise capital, uh, we also going to raise the loans to maintain that 10% um, um, you know, a, a threshold. So the ability of banks to make loans will be, will be enhanced, and that should also rub off positively on the earnings. So in the medium term, we also see, I want to see that the price of some of these companies you know, will even appreciate. Look at Assets Bank, for example. Assets Bank today is, is uh, doing 24 Naira. Okay? Um, I want to believe that with the program that Access Bank has, uh, you know, is, has just established, a $1.5 billion you know, uh, program, and they've, they've even started by uh, uh, you know, announcing the plan to do a $365 you know, billion naira, you know, rice issue. By the time they succeed in getting in these funds, of course they would have um, uh, met the, the requirement. I want to believe that all of that will ultimately rub off positively on the share, share price um, of, um, of Access Bank. And um, for any investor in Access Bank, um, when you now look at um, um, you know, the, the returns in total, not just from price app appreciation, but also from dividends, of course, we know Access Bank has a dividend history. Just recently, they announced the um, 1.8, um, you know, proposed dividend. Okay? So by the, by the time you add dividend and you add the, the appreciation, of course, you're, you're likely to get a return that is higher than pre pre-capitalization uh, uh, period. So I think overall, it is something that will, uh, you know, rub off positively on the market. Banking stocks ma market cap will, of course, increase. You know, there is no doubt about that. And um, the contribution of the banking sector, again, not only to the market, but also to the economy, will uh, increase. And that's why the central bank thinks that this is one measure that will help, you know, um, towards attaining the $1 trillion economy that um, the government has. Um, Okay. You know, he's talking about. All right, Prof, of the Prof, one banks, I, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been asked this question, you know, a lot by, you know, some of my followers. What most of them want to know is, are their funds going to be safe in these banks after this, uh, or while this process is, is, is going on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, depositors' funds are, um, you know, very safe. Remember, the, is even one of the, uh, if you like, the benefits, okay, the attraction of all of this is to ensure that depositors can go to bed and sleep with uh, their two eyes uh, closed. Uh, bigger banks, banks with a um, uh, you know, strong capital base, capital acts as buffer, buffer to, you know, to absorb losses. So when a bank has uh, strong capital, the, 
um, deposit, uh, uh, depositors' funds are well you know, uh, secure. The same thing also applies to, I've talked about investors, okay? Investors too are likely to benefit, okay? Um, an issue that has uh, come up, uh, I thought that was what, what you were going to ask me, is um, this issue of return earnings. The uh, central bank has said for the purpose of recapitalization, return earnings you know, wouldn't be uh, accepted. That what they are after is um, the core capital, which central bank defines as uh, share capital plus share premium, excluding return earnings. Under Basel III, Basel III uh, defines uh, core capital as um, um, share capital plus return earnings. So Basel III acknowledges that return earnings is part of um, you know, tier one capital. But the central bank definition for the purpose of recapitalization is now excluding return earnings or revenue. Uh, reserve. But the, my position here, my take here is this. We had this experience in 2005 when the entire shareholders' funds were allowed. Shareholders' funds comprise share, share capital, share premium, uh, revenue reserves, and uh, also uh, capital reserves. All right. Now, the entire thing was allowed in 2005, but that's not the case now. Only the share capital component and the share premium has been, been allowed. So, central bank must have learned from that experience. Central bank must have good reasons for saying they want to exclude revenue reserves. One of the things we have also heard is that revenue reserves are volatile. Volatile in the sense that if you can pay dividends, you know, from your revenue reserves. Okay, over time, you can even decide to uh, capitalize them, convert them into fully paid shares and pay out as bonus um, uh, right. issues. So to that extent, you could say they're not uh, uh, stable as the share capital. So that's also okay. part of why the central bank is saying that it just has to be the share capital and, uh, and exactly. uh, you know, share Yeah, premium. for sure. I was going to yes, actually premium, uh, bring that up. Yeah, that's for sure. But I know most of my viewers also wanted to know about their funds in the back. But thank you so much. We've run out of time uh, right their now. Thank you so safe. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Ucho Waleke, Director, Institute of Capital Market Studies, Nasara State um, University. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Laden. Yeah. Well, uh, that's the show um, today. Last one for the first quarter of 2024. Remember, you can watch this again on our YouTube channel. You can also check out our website for updates, www.channelstv.com. I'm Laddie Williams. And remember, if you must sell, find the top.